And today we have uh, Caroline Taylor who is joining us. Do you realize this is the first time we've had a guest on the show when we're both here at the same time? <laughs> oh, that's all of weird. our other guests. When one of us is absent, that's and that's so like true. that's how we do it. Is this is this is our way to get somebody on so we can still record even in the other person's absence? And yeah. today we're both here and we have a guest. This is really cool. <laughs> this is awesome. Caroline, I'm glad you're here. Thank <laughs> you. I'm glad I'm here too. Yeah. So Caroline, we have known you for a while. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many years this has been? When did you get involved with with youth ministry at St. Pius? Well, she started off at St. Thomas. Yeah, I started off at St. Thomas in sixth grade, I think. Okay. Yeah. And then I don't know when I met you guys, but you were definitely in the mix <laughs> somewhere there. <laughs> Somewhere along her high school years. That's good. Okay. And then, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So tell us about yourself. Um, where you grew up, where you are now, and how's it all going? Wow. What a really yeah, intense okay. question. <laughs> I'm going to make fun of Paula throughout this entire thing, just so you know, Caroline. This is going to be great. That's fine. And then, then we get into like the testimony part after this, but I want her... To get a chance just to introduce yeah, give us yourself. the snapshot of caroline taylor exactly okay cool so um i grew up in fairfield connecticut obviously um and i grew up catholic so i went to st thomas aquinas church and but i was baptized at st pius fun fact Woo! um <laughs> yeah that's a win um, yeah <laughs> and so i like did youth group um at like through st thomas um i also went to st thomas for elementary school and then I switched over to Woods Middle School. And then I went to Laurelton Hall High School. So um, going back to youth group, I was involved in St. Thomas Youth Group. And then I went on various mission trips with St. Pius as well. Um, so I was involved with both St. Pius and St. Thomas. And our youth groups merged towards the end. Um, and then after high school, I'm here at UConn now. I'm a sophomore at UConn. And I'm a psychology major. Um, what else should I tell about myself? Um, favorite candy. Favorite candy. Um, <laughs> I really like I'm just going to have to do this for him. <laughs> Wait, you really like what? I like Kit Kats. That's the best. Okay. That's, that's mm -hmm. an acceptable answer. It's, it's great. That's an acceptable answer. They don't really sure. do the music anymore for Kit Kats, but that's a whole other situation. Um, but anyways, yeah, okay, yeah, so you are a Fairfield native, you grew up here, going to church here, uh, so tell us about your faith life growing up, um, and what's happened recently? <laughs> oh, okay, um, so growing up, obviously I went to church like every Sunday, my whole family, both sides of the family are like very Catholic. Um, my, both my parents went to Catholic school. My grandma, my, both my grandmas were super Catholic. Um, so I grew up around the Catholic church. I went to a Catholic school. Um, and so obviously like that faith, my religion has always been around me and part of my life. Um, and so going to church every Sunday, like going to like Friday masses for school. Um, but you know, it was just like what was a part of my life and something that I just did. Um, but towards high school is kind of like, although I did go to a like private Catholic school, it was more like, oh, well, not a lot of girls are Catholic or some just aren't Catholic at all. And so it was me just figuring out where I stood with my Catholic faith. Um, but I still attended youth group cause that's what I always did. And it was a very big part of my life. Um, and I went on mission trips and everything and it just like made me who I was. And then when I came to college, I kind of, um, I still kept the faith, you know, close to me. Like I went to church almost every Sunday and I like joined Bible study group and I like did the various activities at like the Catholic center, but I wasn't super into my faith. Like I had used to be because I was, college is a whole new world and you're kind of just discovering a lot in college. And so I kind of wasn't as into my faith as I used to be. And so that meant like dipping into other things of the college life and kind of distancing myself from the Catholic faith more. Um, but last, I think it was last spring semester, the so last semester, 
um, I got more into my faith and it was all because of like the Catholic Center and Focus, which is a Catholic um, like college organization that helps students become closer to their faith. Um, and so it was because of them that I was able to come back to my faith and really be very into it. So, yeah. So what was that? What was that moment that drew you to kind of make a change? Um, what was going on at that time and what happened? Yeah. So going on that time, um, I being very vulnerable, I, you know, college is like parties, drinking, all that kind of stuff, that whole world. And so I participated in it. I was partying. I was drinking. I was just hanging out with a lot of people that were doing that kind of stuff. I like woke up hungover day on some days and all this stuff. And so I was participating more in that than in my faith. And I would still go to like Sunday mass and, you know, be like completely fine and be like, oh, well, it's okay. I'm going to mass. Like everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And I thought everything was fine. I thought everything that I was doing was completely okay. And, you know, my faith was fine, but I was just, I didn't feel like completely okay. Like deep down, I knew that I wasn't full, like how I used to be with my faith. And so, um, I kind of, so one of the focus missionaries was like, Hey, we're, um, like having this conference called seek. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like maybe that, that'll be what helps me because I, you know, I love conferences. I love retreats. I love mission trips. Like, you know that. And I really get into that stuff. And so, um, so I was like, okay, you know what? I probably need this. And so I was like, it was actually my friend's birthday weekend, like one of my best friends here. And I decided either going to this conference or going to my friend's birthday. And that was such a hard decision, but I was like, okay, I really need this. Um, and my friend's birthday comes every year. No offense to her, but like, <laughs> <laughs> so I can always celebrate next year. It's fine. Um, yeah, so I went on Seek and it was, it completely changed how I viewed my faith. And I was like, oh, I really am not okay, but mm -hmm. I want to be okay. Because you always hear that phrase like, oh, well, it's okay to not be okay. And that's completely true. And I completely agree with that. But I was talking to um, a Franciscan, I think it's, I don't know if they're priests, but. Um, the friars. Yeah, the friars. Might have been a priest. It might have been a brother. Okay. I'm not really sure. It depends. You got to um, ask them sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> they all dress yeah. the same. If you had to refer yeah. to him as father, then you're safe. Then yeah. It's safe to assume that it's a priest. <laughs> okay. So I, I think it was a priest. Yes. And so, yeah, his name is Father Mark Mary. And so I, was, I just. Oh! Like, like, yeah, he talks Father Mark Mary. He's also, yeah. he's also like super famous what? in Catholic media circles and stuff. Like, wait, wait. You talk to a super famous CFR friar. That's, wait, that's really this cool. was like information you didn't mention last time. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry, Paula. She's, she's <laughs> revealing us for the first time on the <gasps> podcast. That means this is an exclusive, Paula. This is an exclusive. This is an authentic reaction at the moment on we my are, end. We are exclusive with Caroline Taylor what? with a story never before told. <laughs> Do you, you realize what that means? Father Mark Stop shouting into the microphone. I'm sorry, I just can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got really excited. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> cool. Anyways, resume. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I totally should have told you that. Anyways. No, 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 this is good so, because yeah. I like that unvarnished reaction and that utter insanity that's coming from I'm Paula. sorry. I'm it's absurd. so cool. No, it's a it's a fangirl moment is what's happening right there. <laughs> it's just like no, yeah, she fangirled so cool. about you meeting someone that she would want to meet herself. Yeah. Yeah. I that's... made a video with Father Mark Mary once. What? I made oh. a fake video. Yeah, oh. I made a Faith Friday video. Oh, well, you once. stalked a bunch of people. I to did. Get I them. totally stalked people to get them. <laughs> they contributed to the Diocese of Bridgeport social media for at presence. least two months or something exactly. like that. It was great. <laughs> anyway, Carolyn, I'm sorry. You talked to Father no. Mark. Mary. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, so I talked to Father Mark Mary because there was a part of Seek where there were various people that were open to talking to you. It wasn't like a confession. It was just like someone that you can lean on and just like confide in. Um, with where you are and just like getting some spiritual advice. And so I went to Father Mark Mary because he had a great homily. And so I was just like telling him everything that was been going on in my life. And I was like, you know, I know this is not aligning with the Catholic Church and, you know, the morals and ideals of, you know, even just like the faith. 
And so he's like, he said, he literally said to me, it's okay to not be okay, but it's okay if you want to be okay. And like, I keep saying that to myself and it's so cool because I never really thought of that. And so after that, I was like, you know what? I do want to change my life around. And so it was just that whole weekend, I was just able to be vulnerable and then realize like, okay, maybe this trajectory of my life is not where I really want to be. And it's not where I'm truly satisfied with who I am. Mm. And I wasn't as happy as I thought it was. And so after that, I, um, so I started to change my life around like week by week, bit by bit. And so I told myself, okay, we're going to, you know, cut out drinking and partying. Like, let's start with that, which is a huge thing. But I was like, I have the support of the Catholic Center here in Focus. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'll be okay because I have these people that will help guide me. And it was a little tough telling my friends that because they were like, oh, well, she's probably just like taking a week off from drinking, you know, like we all do that. Like, that's what I thought, probably thought they were thinking because like, that's what everyone's like, oh, I'm not going to drink tonight. And then like someone does. Um, but I was like, yeah, guys, like I'm just cutting out drinking drinking and partying and they would still invite me to all these things and I'm like I can't really go like that's not good for me basically um but so I started cutting out that lifestyle and then I started praying more every single night because I wasn't praying every single night before then and it was crazy like I literally like sat down and found time and prayed with God every single night from then on And I was really getting to my Bible study. Like I was starting to understand what I was actually reading and like applying it to my life. And like it gave meaning to what I was going through. Um, And then I had a boyfriend at the time. And so he was agnostic and which is completely like, okay, like I respect that. But it was tough for our relationship because if you're not equally yoked and you're not both very into your faith and you're not like guiding each other and bringing each other closer to heaven, it's not bound to work out, which I didn't realize because I was like, oh, well, I can save him. And I'm like, no, that's literally God's job. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) It's a boyfriend, not a project. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And it's not your responsibility Um, to fix him. (laughs) Literally. And so, but, you know, I loved him so much that I was like, oh, I just want this for him. But it's up to God to work in his heart and do that for him. And so as I got closer to God, um, my boyfriend and I, like our relationship just started to distance more and fall apart more and just not be what it used to be. Because I was telling him, oh, I'm cutting these things out of my life. I don't want to do this in our relationship. Um, This is how our relationship is going to shift because I'm, you know, changing my lifestyle, basically. And um, he, he said that he respected it, but it was just a really tough situation because he couldn't fully understand because he, he didn't understand, you know, he wasn't Catholic. He wasn't going through what I was going through and he hasn't been through what I've been through. So obviously he couldn't truly understand. And I completely get that. Um, and so it was like the last week of, of our relationship and it was just really rocky and I actually was put into isolation, fun fact. So I had this community built like after Seek because I met all these people and like I got closer to the missionaries and I was really into my faith and I was like, God, like thank you for all these friends. Like this is so cool. And so I was like, okay, I have all these communities. I'm a Bible study. Like I'm really getting into this. And then I had a sore throat and like it was really weird. I had like, these like white spots and I was like, what is this? Like I need to get this checked out because like COVID was a thing. It still is, but like, you know. And so um I went to go get tested and they're like, Well, you're negative, but like you need to be put in isolation for a few days just to make sure. And so I was put into isolation after like having this really strong community. And it was really tough for me because I was like, okay, now I'm left with like my thoughts and like God like that's literally all I had and like some schoolwork and so I was like okay I can't do anything but pray because I have all this time because I'm stuck like I was put in a hotel room and so I was like I'm just here by myself so I started to you know get more into my faith and pray more to God about it and especially my relationship with my boyfriend at the time and even just like overcoming this past life of myself you know just like all the past things that I've done um, and asking him to truly just like take those out of my life and help like strengthen me. 
And so um, my relationship with my boyfriend just really started to fall apart that last week when I was in isolation. And so the last night of isolation, I was like crying. I was like, God, this is really not working out, this relationship. I'm really trying my best. But I'm like, you know what? I'm just handing it over to you because I really cannot do anything. Like, I just handed it. You know, I basically handed almost everything over to him that night because I was like, you are in control of my life. Like, you are in, in control because if I control it, it won't be benefiting me and won't lead me closer to you. Like, mm-hmm. it'll just be me still attached to this world, but having that little bit of faith in me rather than me giving God control, he will guide me. Um, and so I was like, God, here you go. I'm not in control. I cannot handle this anymore. The next day, me and my boyfriend broke up. It was crazy. I was like, after we broke up, I was like, okay, God, I guess this is what you wanted. Like, I don't know. (laughs) So after that, I just started, you know, more trusting in God because, you know, I do have trust issues and trusting in people after I've been through a lot. um, It's just really tough for me. And so... I've been trying to trust in God. And after that, it was really hard to trust him because he did take away my best friend at the time. But God is my new best friend. So that's okay. (laughs) Um, So I just began to trust in him and just say, you know, enter into my heart and heal me because I really need healing at this time and just need your love. Like, what is your love? Um, And so I just continued to, you know, accept his love into my life and just try my best to trust in him and allow him to heal me because although I'm very good at being vulnerable and telling people what's going on in my life allowing people to see me like that can also be a struggle for me and allowing people to try to fix me I like to fix other people before I fix myself and so like allowing God to fix me I was like oh you really want to do this like Mm. uh, so the summer came around and this summer I really got into reading the Bible because I was talking to one of the missionaries here at school and I was like, you know, I'm really loving, you know, my prayer life right now, but I feel like I'm there's something more that I need. And she was like, okay, how about, you know, you try to read the Bible because we're in Bible study, you know, like take a passage, just take it a passage at a time, read a passage a week and just, you know, pray with it. And so she taught me how to do that. And so I was like, okay, cool. So over the summer, I read the Bible almost every single day, which I was like, what the heck? I was like, you know, growing up in Catholic school, like you, you hear like Bible verses all the time, like, you know, first Friday masses and like going to church, you always hear those passages, but you don't pick up a physical Bible and read it all the time, you know? So that's different. And so I was like, oh, like, well, who is this girl? Like, she's picking up a Bible. Um, (laughs) And so that was really cool. And my faith journey has just been very strong and I'm like the happiest I've probably ever been, which is really cool. And God's just been like moving a lot in my heart and he's been healing me a lot. Um, just really working in my heart, healing me, like showing me my worth and just saying, you know, I know you've done these things, but it's okay because I saved you and you're loved and here you are. I love you. So, mm. Nice. There's a lot of um, it's just a lot of enormous steps of spiritual growth that have happened for you in a really short amount of time, like a really short amount of time. It's it's amazing. It's really cool to, to see this. You go from uh, you go from really living your faith, but on a on a shallow sort of level. I don't mean that as a criticism of you at all. Right. But you were just kind of you're doing the, the basic stuff, which is actually important. You had the foundation. You're going to mass every Sunday, even if the rest of your life didn't correspond to somebody who goes to mass every Sunday. Right. So you're going to mass. And do you see just right there that there was grace at work where, where God was never going to let you go? Uh, and because you were still faithfully going to mass, you were able to be attentive when he started calling. And when he when he gave you that grace to open your eyes and see what was happening in your life, that doesn't come just because God was breaking. And that becomes that comes because you were building up this immense store of his grace by going to mass every week. Like there was some some presence of his in your heart, that that presence of the spirit just saying, hey, Caroline, do you know where you belong today? It's Sunday. 
you belong with me at mass. I don't care if you're hungover, you belong with me at mass. <laughs> and, and you were attentive to that, even though it wasn't clicking and, and you stayed with it. That's first of all, that you had the maturity to keep doing that, to know this is important and I'm going to keep going. And even though I don't maybe want to today or don't feel like it, or I'm not feeling very much, you had that maturity to do that. And that's by itself is, is awesome. And it's a grace and, and you cooperated with it. So I'm, I'm super proud of you for, for that piece right there. That's, that's amazing. But then, then you, you go and you have this experience with the Lord at seek. And in that experience, you're, you're seeing more about who you are and you're seeing more that God is calling you to something even better than what you've been living. He's calling you to something even greater. And you also had then the the maturity to say, I know that I'm made for something better. I recognize this doesn't correspond to my real dignity, to the truth of who I am. And I can, I can go much further. And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to take that step. And then let's add another step of, of enormous growth and great maturity on your part. This is, this is really just complimentary. It's awesome, right? <laughs> Then you, you have this, this boyfriend, but you're able to recognize in the relationship what, what worked and what didn't work. And you're able to respect him in his own struggle to believe, in his own struggle of faith, because he's, mm. he's an agnostic. So there's, there's a genuine struggle there. And so you have respect for him for that struggle. But you also, you also had total confidence in yourself. That's God's grace at work. Total confidence in yourself to say, hey, here's mm. the thing. <laughs> this is what's going to have to happen in this relationship if it's mm. going to work. And then with that total confidence and, and strength, you're able to recognize some aspects of this aren't working out. Mm -hmm. He's not my project to fix, nor am I his project to fix. And if this isn't going to work where the two of us together are going to grow, then it's not good for either of us. So right there, your own spiritual maturity and your charity are just are, are coming out. So you're able to, to make an incredibly mature decision because that's not an easy thing for people to do. That's not easy especially a college student who who wants the relationship to work out. I mean, how often, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've encountered that, right? Where somebody's, Usually the opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somebody's, somebody's in this relationship that like they, they don't see eye to eye on anything, yeah. but they're convinced that they have to stay in it for what I'm like, what, what's wrong with you? Just break up. This, this doesn't work. You guys obviously disagree on everything and don't like each other. Yeah. You know? <laughs> obviously, this in your case, it's different. You guys actually liked each other, but there were there were still things that, that weren't working. But yeah. it takes it takes courage. It takes courage to be able to admit that and recognize it. And it takes courage uh, and tremendous maturity and charity to be able to to say that to one another and to take that step. So it's it's really cool to see how God's been been at work in that way. Um, for you moving beyond that sort of surface level external i'm going to mass on sunday and that's what it means to be to be a catholic um, what was it that helped you to move from that surface level of the external practice which is in itself something important mm -hmm. but to this deeper place where you're, you're you're really with the lord like how did that how did that deeper practice come into your heart in such a way that you were able to appreciate it the way that you do today yeah, um, I honestly think it's just building on my relationship with the Lord, just keeping at like praying and just saying like, okay, rather than just like a baseline, oh, God, thank you for this, which is completely fine. Like, that's how some people pray. And that's all good. We obviously have to thank the Lord. But, um, <laughs> you know, rather than just saying like, oh, thank you, God, for this, or like, I'm doing this today, which is how I used to pray. I have like deeper conversations with him as in like, okay, Jesus, I'm really hurting, enter into my heart and like heal me. And mm -hmm. it's like deeper ways to allow, you know, God into your heart and into your life. And I was just like asking for healing and restoration of my heart. And then I was just saying like, God, who am I to you? And it's just like these bigger questions. And I think also too, like, it depends on like the community that you're surrounding yourself with, because I you know, talk to the other people at my, you know, at the Catholic Center and part of Focus. And they were like, oh, well, um, here are a few things that you can say and do, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, okay, let me try that. Um, but, but I truly think it's just growing in your relationship with the Lord and saying, okay, yes, like I choose him and this is what I want. How can I continue to keep in my life and how can he continue to work in my life? And how do I see him in my life? And 
how I truly saw him was at mass because you celebrate mass and you celebrate, you know, the Eucharist and all that. So rather than just going to mass because I had to, I wanted to understand what God was trying to say to me through the homilies and through uh, the various readings. I wanted to understand what mass meant to me in my life. And I'm still trying to understand, you know, the, the sacrament of, you know, receiving the Eucharist every single mass. And I'm still like, understanding all of that. But truly, it's just a way of like getting closer to God and how can I keep him in my life and keep seeing him in my life. Yeah. Nice. That's beautiful. <clears throat> I'm thinking about when you define to me the word religious, because as, as I'm listening to you, you're like living out the religious practices of like being a Catholic. And then, you know, something happened where then religion led you to relationship. Um, and that is something, oh, it's such a beautiful word that often just gets torn down. Um, Father, I think you told me one day that Religare, that is like the root word yeah. of religion, yeah. right? And re means to turn back. Well, so or... yeah, like the, the root of, of the word religion means to to bind to. There you go. So like if I'm bound to someone, uh, there, there's there's a, a bond there that connects me to them, but that bond is not the same. It's not coterminous with the relationship that I have with them. Mm. So, but it does bind me to them. So like I'm I'm stuck to them, but if I if I go further and begin a, a real relationship, the bond remains. The, so the religion part remains. It's like a, a three-legged race. <laughs> if I if I'm tied up to somebody <clears throat> who I've never met before, but in that three-legged race, uh, while our legs are tied together, I start talking to them and, and we start to form a friendship. Then the bond remains even once the the tie mm -hmm. has been has been broken. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're still now we're in a relationship. It's it's different now. I I know this person. I can talk to them and we can start to share things. If it's just a three-legged race partner and there's nothing further than that, then there's there's really no purpose to it. Once the bond is broken. Uh, then so also is the the religion, right? right? It's right. I'm no longer connected to them. Yeah. Um, or G.K. Chesterton's famous quote: "Let your religion be less of a theory and more of a love affair." Yeah. So it's like that's yeah. that take that next step. Like religion, being religious and like doing these practices are still important, but like let it be a love affair and not just a theory. Which you know, like you're kind of saying, like well, you kind of knew things intellectually, like you grew up knowing about the faith. But the moment you accepted Jesus was like the moment you accepted this relationship with him. And then that's what like clearly has transformed the last almost year of your life. Um, but crazy, I guess like nine months, honestly. <laughs> It happened fast, yeah. It happened, it happened really fast. fast. Well, I mean, nine months, that's all it takes to have to have a new life, right? That's true. Whoa, whoa. Boom. Whoa. Whoa. That was deep. <laughs> so profound, man. Um, Caroline, listen, here's, here's, the, here's the question then. When you look back on your childhood, on growing up in the in the Catholic Church, growing up going to Catholic school, except for that little short time that you were in public school and then you went back to Catholic school, uh, when when you look back on that, how do you look at that foundationally? Do you, do you see that there was a, a foundation of faith that was laid for you, that now in your adult life you're we're going to count you as an adult because you're in college, okay, <laughs> a very very young adult, but you're, you're an adult, you, you like. College students seem younger and younger to me every year. Uh, yeah, it's smaller and smaller. In, <laughs> yeah, they do. In, in your in your adult life, like, do do you see how you're building now on a foundation that was laid, but understanding better what that foundation actually meant? I definitely think so. Um, I know I have a lot of friends that grew up Catholic, went to Catholic school, but as soon as they, you know, entered college or high school, they're like you know, I just want to figure out, discover like what's for me. And that's completely fine too. Um, that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to discover like our identity and that's God. Um, but I do think that my foundation of having, you know, gone to Catholic school and gone to Catholic high school, I think just being immersed in that community and just making it such a big part of my life, it's something that's always been in the back of my mind. And so it's always been the inkling of like, oh, well, this is a thing that you should like be thinking about or focusing on. Like, where is that in your life? Because it's just been a part of my life since basically I was born because like I was baptized, whatever. Um, at St. Pius, but, by the way. At St. Pius. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no competition whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I think the foundation was definitely, it's definitely something that has helped me because I genuinely don't know where I'd be with my faith life right now if it weren't for, you know, being part of the Catholic church growing up. And I know that a lot of people have grown up Catholic and have had some people have said that they've had some bad experiences with it. And just like some Catholic schools experiences, they've had some bad experiences. I mean, me as well. But um, and that kind of shifts them away from the church, which kind of sucks because that's not what the church is. The church is the body of people that make it up of what the Catholic Mm -hmm. church is. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not the institution. And so. I don't know. I just, I do think that having that background, it's always been something that's like, oh, well, where is this in your life right now? Like, shouldn't you be participating in this? Shouldn't this be in your life right now? Because it's always been there. So. What do you, what do you wish to tell people who, you know, might be younger than you, like in high school, which we're going to bring you in person (laughs) to give a testimony talk, which I'm excited about, but what's, something that you wish you could tell your younger self maybe, or, you know, people who used to be, Ooh, what could you say to your younger self? Yeah. That's a good, I like that one. Oh, so that's, so, that's a good interview question. Okay. I'm real proud of you for that one. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Approval. <laughs> 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 that's good. Yeah. Um, to my younger self, I was just a completely different person mentally, emotionally. Um, my younger self especially in middle school and high school. Um, I was just very insecure, just didn't really like myself and like like what was happening in my life um, because it's just those social pressures and just like comparing yourself and all those things. And so you're constantly comparing yourself and then that just doesn't help you at all. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to your faith, you know, going to church and then feeling these things, you're like, oh, well, if I'm a bad person, then like, if you're relaying it to God, you're like, oh, well, and God thinks I'm a bad person. And, you know, if you think about that of yourself, how do you think a higher power thinks of you, you know? So that's how I always thought. I was like, oh, well, God hates me because this is going on in my life. And this is what, you know, is happening. And this is how I feel about myself. So of course, he doesn't like me right now, or I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So he doesn't really like me and all the stuff. And like, I'm not being accepted by other people in my school for being Catholic and like being called names because I like talked about my Catholic faith. And so honestly, like I would just tell myself like all of that, like that's just honestly in your head. And that's just the devil trying to get to you. Mm-hmm. Like it, it truly is the devil trying to get to you and distract you. And you believe it because you're not thinking, Oh, this is the devil. This is Satan talking to me. It's fine. Like, bye. Like, you, you're not thinking that like you're not thinking all the time bye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> bye, <Felicia. laughs> goodbye bye. But, <laughs> i was waiting for that i knew that was coming <laughs> that's great <laughs> that's fantastic oh. so you're, not, you're not thinking that like you know those thoughts that you have and those negative feelings um that you have about yourself or those negative things that are happening in your life are because of satan and the devil and sin You think, oh, well, it's God who's all good. And this high power is like, well, you're doing this, which is against me. I don't like you anymore. Or like, Mm -hmm. you are this, you identify yourself as this, or like, you you, like hate yourself or something. And he's, he's kind of just like, oh, well, if you hate yourself, then like, you know, I don't really like you either. All this stuff, you know, you just automatically throw it on God Mm -hmm. rather than Satan. Mm -hmm. And so I would just try to tell myself, like, hey, you know, be vulnerable, bring it to God, because he is all loving. He never hates you. He never did. And he never will. Mm -hmm. He loves you more than you know. And there is someone out there that loves you more than you will ever be able to love yourself more than anyone else here on earth will ever be able to love you. Because I confided in so many other people and I depended on them for love rather than like myself and God. And so I just say like, try to confide more in God and try to be vulnerable with him. And whenever things are not going right, don't blame him first, 
go to him, pray to him about it and be like, help me because he will, he will help you. He's not here to condemn you. He's not here to hate on you. He's not here to strike you down or anything. Like he genuinely loves you and he wants the best for you. And he's always been there just waiting for you. You just have to go to him. Mm -hmm. So there's a piece there that you're, that you're talking about that I think is really powerful. You're recognizing how in your own self-identity, your own sense of, of who you were, you were projecting sort of your own identity onto God. And so your, your own uh, self-criticism and, and those things that you kind of held against yourself, in your, in your mind, in your heart, you, you thought that this is how God saw you. Mm-hmm. And so there's a sort of a, a projection of your own struggle and your own insecurity onto God, uh, which is actually really understandable. That, that makes sense. When we're struggling, uh, we think that everybody sees our struggle. Mm-hmm. When, when we're having a hard time, we think that everybody sees us the way that, that we see ourselves. Uh, and it's it's usually never that way. <laughs> it's usually the, the exact opposite. People mm-hmm. think very differently of us and don't realize that we're in the midst of a struggle unless we tell them explicitly. They, they don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you're at this place where you you recognize the truth of who God is. And you also are recognizing sort of the truth of who you are. Can you talk about what it means to recognize the truth of your own identity and how the truth of your own identity is distinct from God's identity and yet intimately related to the truth of God's identity? Yeah. So, I mean, God created you. And so you, like all of us, are children of God. And so that's our identity connected to him. And it's through our relationship that that we continue to build upon that relationship that we have as his children. Um, But separate identity is God is this all loving, all powerful being. But he just truly is a very like jealous God for your love. Mm -hmm. And so he will love you and he just wants your love. And so once he's able to love you and you allow him to love you and allow him into your life through that relationship where you say, okay, God, you know, I see who you are. I think I know who you are. Show me. I allow you to, you know, just like, I want to have a relationship with you. I choose you. And it's with those few words, like, I want to have a relationship with you. I choose you. Like, do what you like will in my life. He says, okay, now I have access to show you who you truly are. Now, who you truly are is different than who you think you are. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that a while ago. Um, Because who you think you are is just your thoughts and what people are telling you. And basically Satan just being like, "Mm -hmm, (laughs) like being annoying. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but... (laughs) That was great. Yeah, I know. I can't. Um, He's annoying. Um, She makes the same face about Satan annoying her that she would make if her little brother was annoying her. I think that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I roll. She's annoying. (laughs) But I truly think that your identity comes with accepting God into your life because he will show you who you truly are and what you are made for and how much you truly are loved because if you don't have that in your life it's just who you think you are and what people tell you you are versus your true identity as in like building that relationship but through that relationship you he creates your identity separate from him and he's like you are my child here are your talents here is how you're going to use them i made you this way i love you because you do this and you're this way and it's like Here's your identity because you chose me. Mm-hmm. And you always he always has that identity for you. He created you. He knows what your identity is. You just have to be willing to accept him into your life to reveal that identity of yours. Amen. Yeah. Thanks. It's so beautiful because like you realize in all of this, God doesn't hold back your inheritance. Like God doesn't mm-hmm. hold back your identity at all. Even like when we're caught up in sin, like it's still it's still very real and nothing can change that. And one thing that you kept, every time you made that, that face about Satan, <laughs> I just kept thinking about this part in scripture when um, Eve is in 
is talking with um, the enemy, with the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And in most of this conversation, out of a place of doubt, she chooses to enter into dialogue with the enemy rather than to be in dialogue with God the Father. Mm. And, you know, Satan is an accuser. And so, like, we unknowingly, a lot of us, if we're not aware of how the enemy is, you know, oppressing us and attacking us, well, have a dialogue with him about our insecurities. And all he does is just augment that. Meanwhile, mm. if we enter into dialogue with the father, all of a sudden the accuser's voice starts to silence. Mm. And, and it's just like a powerful thing to recognize, okay, God exists, but yeah, I have to recognize the reality that seeing also exists, but I don't have to be in dialogue with him. Um, cause the father's voice drowns him out. Um, and it, it, and that's what I'm just hearing as you're kind of sharing this and you're recognizing this and like you are choosing to be in dialogue with the father and he is speaking loudly your identity into your life. And you're like, yeah, that's, that's who I am. And you're, you're accepting that you're taking ownership of your inheritance. And that's like such a beautiful witness. Um, man, it just like sets me on fire and I really love this. Awesome. Oh, it's just so good. Um, yeah. Is there, is there anything else that you, that you want to say, um, to anybody, to the tens of people listening? Um, <laughs> how great would it be if her response was no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she can hold it back. <laughs> um, honestly, I just say if you do have that inkling inside of you where you're like, okay, well, you know, I go to church and things are fine. It's like, but I feel like there might be more or like you don't really know if there's more. I say pray like genuinely that's where everything starts. And I know prayer can be tough um, because it kind of sometimes feel like, feels like you're just talking to like the wall in your room. But like it, it, you just have to keep at it and it won't something won't just happen through one session of prayer like nothing I mean things can happen but it takes time and you have to be okay with that and you have to be okay with waiting and through that waiting the Lord will work in your heart and so I just say like if you have that inkling inside of you that desire for more that desire for just wanting to understand I just say pray and cling on to God because if you stray away from that you're not going to get what you want out of it you're you just have to truly cling on to God. And that's what I've been doing. I'm like, okay, God, I gotta cling on to you because like <laughs> sometimes it gets really hard, especially in college and even in high school. Like it's really tough mm-hmm. with just, you know, the atmosphere and the environments that you can be put in and you know the social pressures and like what people think is cool and what people, you know, say like how you should act and how you should be. And it's like well, I don't really know about that. So I just say, honestly, just cling to God because he will show you what you want. Mm-hmm. Mm. Amen. Nice. Uh, that's beautiful. Carolyn, I'm really proud of you. Oh, that's thanks. <laughs> yeah, we're really proud of you. We're really, this is really, really cool. proud. And just like, praise Jesus for focus. <laughs> Um, so anybody listening to this, we are actually having seek again at our parish this year, um, in person. So dates are TBD. I'm assuming it's sometime in February, but if you're looking for an encounter like Caroline had, um, we'd love you to think about it. Just go to seek22.org, um, for details. Way to have the website memorized. That's really cool. That's because I've been on it repeatedly recently. (laughs) Caroline, thanks for thanks for doing this with us. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing your story. Yeah. This is, this Thank you really... for having me. Ah, it honestly was such a pleasure. Now, when you share this with with your your community up there at, at UConn, we're going to get tens of more listeners. Awesome. We'll maybe make it <laughs> to a hundred. Yeah, maybe a hundred. <laughs> oh, if we could hit our first hundred, that would be so neat. <laughs> Yeah, no, honestly, this is so good. So it just, I, somebody out here is going to need to hear this and, and listen to it. And this will be great. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for being a college student who's living your faith. Amen. It's really, it's really good to know. Thank you for having me. This is so cool. Be done. <laughs> the best. Cool. All right. Well, that's Caroline Taylor. And I'm Paula Pena. And I'm Father Sam Kachuba. It's real like the lamb. Thank you. Thank you.